जय जय राधा जय जय राधा The role of women and peace. Well, it's crucial, obviously. A, because you're dealing with half the world, and how can you possibly have peace if you leave out half the world? But B, because women tend to play two very interesting roles in peace or lack thereof. And they're really almost opposite roles, but both of them are played by women. One role played by women is the tender nurturer. So women are the, the, the creative force. We're the ones who give birth. There's a reason that we say Mother Earth and Mother Nature. In Sanskrit, where we have genders with words, the power of creation, Shakti, is feminine. That which is created, Prakriti, nature, is also feminine. Shrishti, the creation, feminine. So, so this, is, this is the divine feminine. The power that brings it into existence and that which is here. So the feminine, and, and what I would say rather than just women is the feminine aspect. Because there are women who are more masculine than many men. And there are men who are more feminine than many women. So what I would talk about rather than just women and men is more of our feminine side in this, the feminine principle, you could say, and the masculine principle. So the feminine principle is that which creates, that which then takes care and feeds. You know, you see mother Mother whales swimming with their baby whales, right? I was at a conference in Hawaii in January, and they were talking about the humpback whales, and they go in the mothers after they give birth. They're the ones who bring the babies back. So it's, it's creation, and it's the peaceful care for that creation. A dear, dear friend of mine Dr. Vandana Shiva speaks a lot about women as the seed keepers. That we don't necessarily think about how important seeds are when our food comes from the grocery store, but seeds are the stuff of life. And when our seeds start to get tinkered with, whether it's seeds in our body or the seeds in our agricultural fields, when they start to get tinkered with chemically, you lose both creation and you lose the, the healthy sustenance of that creation. And so when we speak about peace, women tend to be the ones who are about connection. That tends to be much more of a feminine way to be, is the, the connection, the be with me, the hold my hand, the, you know. And so it's, it's an energy of Let's make peace. It's okay. Let's connect. It's a, it's a very beautiful energy in that way that's crucial, of course, to all peacemaking. But if we're really honest with ourselves, not on a theological level or a deeply spiritual level, but just more in terms of a day-to-day -day life level, there's another role that women play which isn't quite so beautiful, which frequently tends to be the one that is instigating also a lot of conflict. We see frequently, you know, in India, joint families are the traditional way of life. And we're still even, you know, even today, it's very, 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 very common. And two generations ago, it was universal. I mean, it's literally been within a generation or two that joint families are even an option, that someone would even think about the possibility of not living with the family. And in situations like this, and I say this just from 
more than 20 years of experience of couples coming. It's the women, mostly, who tend to be the ones saying, you know, get us out, get us out, what's the problem? Why does he get everything? You should have this, you should, you know. The, the two brothers, because it's always, it, it's the male side. So it's the woman moves into the guy's home. So it's the guy's family. Should there be two brothers or three brothers, you're going to have two or three brothers, their wives, the brother's parents. And that which splits up joint families tends to very frequently, and again, it's a broad generalization, but tends to very frequently be the women who are sort of instigating, why does she get that? Why does he do this? You should stand up for your rights. You know, why does your mom or dad play favorites? Why this? Why that? We should have our own place. And I can't tell you how many families have come. The women saying, for God's sakes, tell him to get us out of there. It's totally unfair. You know, he makes the most money. They're the ones who eat it all up. I do all of the work. You know, and the husband if the wife isn't there, saying, could you please help her see, you know, how important the family unit is. Fine, I make more money, who cares? They're my brothers, it's my parents, you know, let's, let's just live peacefully together. And again, very broad generalization, but a common enough trend that it's worth mentioning. And so, in both cases, you really see the role of women. And so I would say, if women were more connected with the divine feminine within themselves, they would have less of a need to instigate and provoke conflict. They also themselves would be in less conflict. You know, one of the, one of the things that we learn as women is women are our own worst enemies. We speak a lot about what men do to us. We don't speak nearly as frequently about what other women do to us. And if you, if you dissect a lot of workplace dynamics, extended family dynamics, community dynamics, where there are women who, there's problems. Very, very frequently, the problem, if not on the surface level, on an underlying level, is actually women instigating other women in conflict. So I, I really deeply believe that if the women could come together as the divine feminine, could stop competing, could stop cutting each other and really become that, that energy for each other, not just for the men in our lives, but for the women in our lives, that not only would our homes, our workplaces, our communities be so much more peaceful, but actually we could then use that energy that we're losing in these stupid, nonsense, little, like, you know, petty stuff. And we could really use it to bring peace to the world.